Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to our latest learning lab. Delighted to have you with us. Um, joining me this morning is my good colleague, Chantal Boileau. Uh, Chantal of the Barry Public Library and I partner on presenting the Learning Lab series, our, our monthly uh, expert speaker series. Um, and today we are going to be talking about a, um, a topic that's very much top of mind uh, during the pandemic, and that is our own mental health. And of course, how that can have an effect on our business. Um, so we are uh, recording this session. We will be sharing this session uh, later on, and we will also be sharing the, the, uh, the slide presentation. Um, uh, the, we will have a question and answer session at the end of approximately 20 minutes uh, for question and answer. Uh, however, if you do have burning questions throughout, please just pop them in the chat box and either myself or Chantal will, will pick up on them and, and pass them over to our speakers. Okay, so joining us today, we have Liz Grummet and Lynn Raimondi. Liz and Lynn make up the fundraising and communication team at CMHA South Simcoe County. They have been part of CMHA Simcoe County for over 20 years across a variety of settings, including case management, crisis intervention, outreach support, education, and fundraising. Liz and Lynn enjoy connecting with their community in, in both a professional capacity and with various volunteer roles. Their personalities complement each other and together are able to provide a genuine, open-minded and empathetic approach when connecting with others. So it's my great pleasure to have Liz and Lynn with us this morning. And without further ado, ladies, I'll hand it over to you to take it from here. Perfect. Thank you so much, Dave. Um, it's so wonderful to have this opportunity to, uh, you know, speak with some people in our community and and provide some, I guess, education and support around mental health and uh, our businesses. So. We will get started. And um, so I guess people can throw some questions in the chat as we go along. Um, and we will do our best to, uh, to answer them. Okay, so we're gonna start by, we've already been introduced, but we'll show you a little bit more about what we look like. Um, so as, uh, as Dave shared, you know, I've been part of Canadian Mental Health for a while and uh, had lots of opportunities to work in different programs. So. Um, providing education just seems really natural because we've experienced so many different things in our community. I have a couple of uh, kids who are in grade 11 and seven who are at home doing some, uh, hopefully doing some schooling. And uh, I uh, have been in this area for all my life. So a local person, so that's me. Oh, Lynn, you're on mute. Oh, I love it. I'm on mute. Okay, I'm <laughs> sorry. Um, hi, everybody. My name's Lynn and um, I have the pleasure of working with Liz every day in the fundraising and communications team at CMHA. Um, actually, both of us started as students 20 years ago. Um, so a uh, long time running there. And um, thanks for having us today. We've done uh, quite a few presentations in the last six months to a year, you know, especially um, with the pandemic um, and the stress that that's caused. So um, happy to be with you today. Good. So just some notes. Um, we would like this, uh, this session to be informative for you. And um, certainly we encourage your participation anytime. Um, feel free to use the chat or even raise your hand for a comment or question. Um, you know, engaging in discussion is such a great way to learn from each other. So you'll hear both Liz and I share our experiences, and we're hopeful that you'll feel comfortable to share yours as well. The program is meant for personal education purposes. Um, it's not meant to substitute for medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment, and it is not a medical or counseling training program. I hope that you'll enjoy what we've put together for you today. So today we're going to talk about the importance of mental health and how it affects your business, identifying some stress triggers, some signs of burnout, how to manage your stress and anxiety, other stress and anxiety in others, how to how to see, uh, you know, see the signs of those things, and also where to go for help. So important, um, what resources are in our community um, and some tools and apps that um, are available to you. COVID-19, 
we've certainly been hearing all all about COVID-19 the last year and a half, and it really has had such a huge impact um, in our lives. Uh, So many of us are facing challenges that are stressful, overwhelming. It makes sense that you feel this way. Um, These times are unprecedented. We need to work extra hard to manage our emotions well. And everyone can expect to have a lot of mixed feelings. Naturally, we are feeling anxious. We may be feeling waves of panic, um, particularly, you know, when you watch the news, uh, when you listen to the radio. Uh, The coronavirus has certainly impacted our lives in every way, you know, from the freedom of movement to all the public health restrictions that we've had to follow in the last year and a half, um, to how our children are educated. Liz mentioned, you know, she has two kids at home. I do as well. And um, certainly um, that's provided some extra stress on parents and kids. You know, financial stressors, right? Business closures, public health restrictions have prevented uh, prevented businesses from earning income. And, it's, and the list just goes on and on and on. Uh, the pandemic has taken an emotional toll on people in Canada. Um, the Canadian Mental Health Association national team did a, uh, actually has done three studies with the University of British Columbia, and they just released the statistics on their third study. So in each wave, they've done studies. And in the third wave, 77% of adults reported feeling negative emotions as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. The most Common responses across Canada were worried and anxious, bored, stressed, lonely, or isolated, and sad. Overall, we know that a large number of Canadians, actually 41%, report a decline in their mental health since the onset of the pandemic. But the good news is is that most Canadians, 79%, say that they are coping at least fairly well with the stress of the pandemic, using such approaches as walking or exercising outside, connecting with family and friends virtually, maintaining a healthy lifestyle, keeping up to date with relevant information, and taking on a hobby. Good. Liz? So, I think, you know, one of the biggest uh, pieces that we like to talk about when we do these presentations is that it makes sense um, that you're feeling the way you're feeling. And one of the most important things you can do right now is really validate those feelings. Um, You know, it's okay to have many feelings at once. And, you know, I I can start my day feeling pretty optimistic. And then perhaps by lunch, you know, I have a whole new feeling. Maybe I'm frustrated. I've, I've been arguing with my kids. So it's okay. It's okay to have good days and bad days, right? Um, You know, healthy mental health doesn't mean you're happy all the time. It's okay that, you know, you give yourself grace around your own capabilities, both, you know, mentally and emotional. And it's okay to forgive yourself if you don't really feel like doing much of anything. It's okay to recognize that you're only in control of yourself and your own behaviors. You know, sometimes I think we can get caught up in what other folks are doing or being angry or frustrated maybe with some other people's behaviors or or choice of actions, but we can't control that. We can only control ourselves. And it's okay to grieve. You know, Lynn's mentioned, you know, there's been so many losses this year. Um, I, I can't imagine owning a business. I can't imagine the frustration and the sadness and the loss and then the hope, right? The hope of reopening and then changing again. So that grief, the grief our, our, our children are feeling, maybe with missing a graduation, birthdays, like there's so many things that we we are grieving because of the pandemic. So it's okay. It's okay to, to feel that loss. And it's okay to talk about your experiences, right? Talk with somebody, you know, Um, share what you're thinking, even if it's not happy, happy, right? It could just be you're mad, you're frustrated, and you're really tired of of the way that things have been going. So it's okay. And it's okay to embrace, you know, we don't know what's going to happen, but let's try to remain hopeful. So by validating how you're feeling, it sometimes can help give, you know, your your thoughts, your emotions, you know, a little bit more, um, 
I guess, patience, right? So if you try to push those feelings down or say, oh, I shouldn't feel this way. You know what? I'm one of the lucky ones. Perhaps my business has done well. I've been okay. I shouldn't feel this way. No, it's okay. It's okay to still feel frustrated and angry or happy. Maybe you are really happy with the way things are going. But validating and listening to those feelings is an important way of trying to stay, you know, stable with your mental health. So we know that mental health is part of the human condition, right? Um, everyone has mental health. You often hear in the media about mental health and mental illness, and we know that they don't mean the same thing. Everyone has mental health, but not everyone will have a mental illness. Um, in the course of a lifetime, um, some folks will struggle, right? They'll struggle with their mental well-being. Um, they'll have challenges with our, our physical well-being from time to time. And that's the same with our mental health. So we always like to say that everybody has mental health because it is part of our health. Um, and when we talk about this, you know, we're talking about our well-being, our emotions, our thoughts, our feelings, how we solve problems, how we overcome difficulties, um, how we connect with others, and how we understand the world around us. Whereas a mental illness is a little bit more um, difficult, right? It can affect the way you're thinking, you're feeling, you're behaving, and how you're interacting with others. And there's lots of different types of mental illness with various symptoms, and it's different um, for everybody. And it impacts people's lives in many different ways. So we like to remember that, you know, um, health isn't an on-off switch. There's different degrees of health. People move on a continuum ranging from great or good health to so-so health or to poor health, to illness or disability. And most folks fall somewhere in the middle. They're generally in good health. And then the occasional problem may come up. So our mental health is the same way. How do we adapt? How do we deal with things that are, are happening? And during the pandemic, we've had lots of things thrown at us, right? Um, again, you know, lockdowns, restrictions, then openings, and then lockdowns. So it's been a real test on our mental health. And we would really like you to look at, you know, how have you been adapting? You know, how, what, are, what are some of the thoughts you're having? And we're going to talk a bit later about, you know, maybe how you can deal with some of that stress and some of those thoughts. And when would it be maybe the best time to go for it and get some support? Okay, so uh, there's some stats up there for you to look at. What we know is that mental illness does cost $50 billion a year. It affects 7.5 million Canadians, and that is approximately 20% of the population. So these stats do make sense. We know that one in five Canadians will experience a mental health issue throughout the course of their lives. And we also know that mental health, like Liz said, affects five and five, because we all need to take care of our mental health and protect our mental health. So recognizing, you know, that if you're not having these conversations in your workplace, or not recognizing the effects of mental health on your business, that you are missing a big piece of workplace wellness. We want people to think about mental health the same as physical health. And our goal is to have people comfortable talking about these issues and reaching out for help. We often use the example of a broken arm or a visit to the dentist. Most of us would feel very, very comfortable sharing uh, these physical issues in our workplace, right? Um, but how many of us would feel comfortable telling a colleague or a supervisor that we don't feel well, that we feel sad, that we feel anxious, or that the stress in our lives is really impacting our daily living. Prioritizing and addressing mental health in the workplace is the right thing to do for your employees and for your bottom line. When this is done effectively, the potential impacts to your business include such things as higher performance, lower absenteeism, and reduced disability costs. 30% of disability claims in Canada are actually due to mental illness. 
And the cost of the disability leave for mental illness is about double the cost of the leave due to physical illness. We know that mental health or the lack of wellness contributes to missed days and weeks and productive, productivity does become an issue. I'm sure that you have seen in your workplaces that you have witnessed this in your workplace or your family or social circle. You know, it's not hard sometimes to recognize when a person's struggling. The difficult thing is how do we help somebody? How do we help a colleague or an employee take care of their mental health? How do we start that conversation? Liz is gonna share some tips on how we can support someone in the workplace. All right. So, you know, Lynn, Lynn brought up, um, brought up the, the importance about, you know, what are we doing in our workplaces? So I think there's always been a lot of, a fo uh, sorry, there's always been a higher focus on, you know, the physical safe environment. So we take women's training, um, first aid training, um, you know, we, we make the environment safe, right? Physically safe. But how often are you looking at, you know, the psychological health and safety? Um, and I would encourage, again, if there's questions or comments, you know, please, uh, you know, drop them in the chat. Um, if you, if you have, maybe there's things that you are doing. So if you are doing something that you think is, is pretty cool, let us know too. But again, as a responsible employer, you know, thinking about um, the psychological health and safety and are you doing enough? So if we wanna support our employees' mental health, it can, as Lynn said, improve productivity, cut down on absences, increase, you know, worker retention. In short, supporting a safe, supportive and mentally healthy work culture is good for your business. Uh, and leadership, right? Proper leadership practices can make employees more comfortable with disclosing mental health and or addictions, you know, related difficulties. Because we know it can be really tough to perhaps say, just like Zalyn said, you know, I'm really struggling today. Um, I can't come to work. Or maybe I'm going to have to do a different role today. So if you are setting up your, your workplace, your culture um, to welcome those conversations, um, you're going to, you're going to increase all the top things, right? Um, and then it builds on, you know, it adds to how much trust people have, right? And then people can be more honest and it does create an environment that is more conducive to a positive mental health and help staff again, if they're having concerns that they feel comfortable raising those with you. And remembering that not everybody's the same, not everybody, you know, feels the same way or copes with situations the same way. So the response, you know, in your workplace is going to have to be, you know, specific to what the person is looking for. Um, so again, if you, you know, if you look at having a person-centered approach to addressing these concerns, um, it would enc encourage the workplace to build that focus on psychological health and safety. And it just, it would help build that culture where, where people are really taking it serious and knowing how it is impacting everyone. So, you know, you may want to start looking at um, some of your processes in your workplace, your policies, and how, how are your interactions going? Is there anyone that has something that they wanted to share, something that they utilize in their workplace um, that does help with this culture or a concern with, you know, a situation that they just don't know what to do? Does anyone have any, any thoughts or anything they wanted to throw out there? Talking to talking I sometimes in these workshops you feel like you're talking to yourself <laughs> is there anybody there okay so again you know looking at are you putting sorry is there something there nope Liz I was just going to mention um that um five years ago I worked in a program where um we had um peer support workers so we had um, workers in the program that had lived experience. So they had a mental illness and they, and that was part of their working with, with clients. And um, I remember working with one person that, um, you know, struggled a little bit and it was really hard to start that conversation. Right. Um, but what I found is that as soon as I would start the conversation, there was, you know, that relief in that person. So um, sometimes it just takes that little bit of courage 
you know, to, to be there for that person. And, and it just allows them to, you know, to start to open up a little bit about how they're feeling. Perfect. Good example. And we are going to talk uh, in a couple of slides about, you know, how can you, you know, start those conversations. So that's great. So again, just encouraging you to, you know, really examine, you know, are you doing enough for both pieces, the physical safe environment and the psychological health and safety? Perfect. Thanks, Lynn. All right. So I don't know if this is, uh, this is something people want to admit, but does anybody just, some days you really just don't feel like doing anything. And if you are, and, and I can admit, you know, uh, my motivation levels really fluctuate throughout the day. And, you know, what we're learning is living in a pandemic, our stress and anxiety is really high, right? And that affects our productivity. So perhaps you're seeing, you know, some changes in your workplace, maybe, maybe with yourself, maybe you're, you know, you're a smaller business and you are, you're like, wow, it's really hard to keep going. So there's some things to consider um, around, you know, how stress and anxiety affects our productivity. And it could be our identity crisis. So during the pandemic, perhaps you're struggling with, you know, what is the purpose? What is the meaning of what I'm trying to do? Um, without that, having that purpose and that motivation, it's really hard to, to have that self-worth and really keep going. Um, perhaps, you know, your, your, your anxiety is so heightened that it makes you worried. And there's lots of things to be worried about these days, worried about your own finances with your business, um, people that you care about catching COVID, yourself catching COVID, um, losing your job, you know, having a job. Um, and this anxiety can, can create a couple of things. First, it can be a response to something that's actually happened. So it could be very true. You're, you're dealing with financial worries. Uh, maybe you've lost work. Maybe somebody's ill. Or it's a worry about what might happen. And again, we know this in the last year and a half. We aren't sure what's going to happen. Every day there's new announcements. Every day, you know, there's restrictions lifted or added. So that can add to our anxiety as well. Um, worrying about the future of your career, worrying about, you know, what may happen. So that can have impact, you know, your motivation and how you feel about, you know, continuing with your work or really struggling to have that drive. And then when you're really feeling overwhelmed, it's hard to focus, right? And, and I hope other people feel the same way, but it's really hard to focus. My brain feels foggy. So we're living in a stressful time. We have lots of pressures. Um, there's lots of uncertainties. So your brain is trying to adapt to that. And, you know, it's, it goes back to, you know, the caveman days where the fight or flight and we had to, you know, make sure we survived if a tiger came into our village. So our, our, our brains are, are acting the same way. We have a, you know, a change in our adrenaline um, and it takes away energy from our brain to think logically. So there's lots of things going on. And, and again, we like to really, you know, remind you that, you know, you're doing the best you can. And if you're struggling with that, it makes sense. So again, validating, it makes sense that you're feeling that way. I do see something in the chat. Oh, good, yes. so yeah, yeah. You see it there? Um, a comment there that says uh, uh, from one of the attendees that their energy levels have become extremely low. And it's something that I can attest to as well. I, I, I found that, and, I, and I'm trying to make up my mind if this is a good thing or a bad thing. Um, and I'm not quite there yet in terms of, you know, when working from home, um, there's certainly more, you know, flexibility. Uh, I can, I can sort of be in more, more in tune with my own energy levels and, and, uh, I, you know, and then I make that up maybe in the evening or the very early morning, which is, is fine. That's when I find myself most productive. But then when I take a step back from that, I'm like, hold on a minute, you know, now my work day is just expanded. Uh, and, and I'm still trying to work through whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. And I might give you a different answer depending on the, on the day of the week. Are, are you finding that as well, though, that, that folks are coming to you and just saying, you know what, it's all well and good working from home, but I don't quite know when I'm supposed to be working now, you know, because everything mm. just kind of there's for me, there's no. I mean, my, my commute is like 13 stairs, you know, yeah. <laughs> and I never had a long commute. I had a 10 minute commute. I was very fortunate, but still I had that drive to work and that drive home again. And now that's missing from my life. And so now 
everything your work is, is much more you know central and has expanded to take over some of my 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 spare time um are you finding that's a sort of a common thing that people are you know are, are finding is affecting their mental health and you're having discussions around yeah absolutely really great point dave um and you're right so you know there's folks and and lynn and i can say this as well you know we've been pretty lucky that we have a bit of a hybrid um, mode right now we come into the office one day a week and then we we do work from home but you start to add to your day so you know we have meetings that start earlier you know you are you taking your lunch break are you leaving your desk you know we're eating our lunch while we're working so you really have to pay attention to that you know how is your work-life balance and you're right it's super hard now because some people are working in their bedrooms right so they're getting up they're getting ready and they're just shifting to a, a spot in their in their room so mm -hmm. It's important to look at how are you balancing that? Are you able to take breaks, getting outside? Like, thank goodness the weather's cooperating. So getting outside. And I think being really honest about what you're capable of in your day. Um, adding meetings, you know, I have a neighbor who used to have to commute to Toronto. And so her day would be say nine to five and then add her commute either way. But now her camera, and she says it goes on at eight o'clock and her meetings now start at eight and they go to six. So yeah, she lost the commute, but now she has this increase, right? This increase of workload. So I think it's a really good point of paying attention. You know, are you starting to overload yourself and not having that workplace balance? Great point. Thank you so much, Dave. Thank you. So talking about stress. So I'm going to leave it to Lynn here to, to remind us what stress feels like. I'm sure we don't okay. need to remind her. <laughs> but stress is that you know, is that word, it's that common uh, word, and it's always there. I mean, we aren't going to, you know, have many times in our life that we don't have any stress. Um, but certainly, the pandemic has brought about a new added level of stress for people. Um, it's that constant, some people describe it, you know, as that constant level of stress, it's always there. So when we face change, uncertainty or pressure, our bodies react. Hormones move through us and get ready for action. So it's that normal response. Our muscles tense up, our breathing can become quick, and we might feel some physical discomfort. So that's that, you know, scientific definition of stress. But stress is not all bad. Um, you know, on the plus side, short-term stress can make us actually more productive, and it can help us get tasks done, and it can help us meet some challenges. Um, there's lots of positive stress in the world too. For example, you know, having a baby or uh, traveling on a vacation can be stressful, but it's, it's a good stress. We know that prolonged negative stress though can lead um, to, you know, some serious health problems such as anxiety, depression, heart disease. Um, so for this reason, monitoring and managing your stress is one of the best ways that we can stay healthy. We don't always know when we're experiencing stress, right? Um, particularly if we haven't really learned to recognize our own physical signs of stress, or if we're always kind of operating, you know, at that increased level of anxiety, then that can feel really normal to somebody. Um, the person might feel so accustomed to being stressed that it feels normal. They might not actually be able to know what their body feels like kind of in that rest state. And it's that fight or flight uh, response that Liz talked about. Um, I like to think about stress more as a balance in your life. So, you know, um, Liz and I will oftentimes go into um, elementary schools to do some presentations for, um, for kids grades six to eight. And uh, in those presentations, we often use the example of a trampoline, you know, um, it works. It's a great analogy about how our mental health is affected um, when we don't have balance in our life. And, you know, certainly balance is related to how much stress we have. So anyone can struggle with their mental health at any given time. And it does affect everyone. Um, so we need to know how we can manage our stress easily. Um, so that, you know, these kind of serious um, additional health problems are, are, are not going to occur. So when you think about stress, um, you know, we oftentimes think of stress um, in our body, right? So for me, 
Um, I feel stress. Um, I feel stress in my, in my, um, forehead, you know, in my, behind my eyes. So when I'm stressed, I, I usually, I, I will tend to get a headache. Um, and I'll get tenseness, you know, in my shoulders, but we, we do, we know that people feel stress in all parts of the body, right. Um, in the gut area, um, in the, the neck or the upper back, we, we, you know, body aches are common. Um, certainly when people are stressed, they're more tired, right? Um, they feel exhausted. And then that's a common thing that we've been hearing as well, um, you know, since the start of the pandemic is that people are exhausted. And that's stress. That's your body's response to having too much stress. Um, people will often talk about, um, you know, various sleep problems. So they're not able to fall asleep easily. Um, if they fall asleep, they, you know, wake up often throughout the night, um, they may feel restless, have those racing thoughts. Um, you know, people feel stress a lot in the chest area with some pain or some pressure, um, accelerated heart rate, those kind of things. But one thing we don't really think about often is how stress also affects our behavior. Um, you know, certainly when we feel stressed, um, we can have some noticeable changes in our behavior. Um, for me, sometimes I, I think my behavioral response to stress comes out in anger. Um, it's probably not a good thing, but, um, you know, I feel, you know, some days when I'm really stressed or I have a lot of pressure on myself, I just, I feel mad. Um, so that's, you know, our behavior response to stress, um, such things as, you know, our eating habits, right? We can, we can be overeating or under eating, you know, eating foods that aren't good for us when we're stressed. An increase in drug or alcohol use, you know, is, is common, um, is a common response to stress. Some social withdrawal, you know, maybe when you're really stressed, you avoid people, you avoid places, um, you don't want to talk to anyone, right? It's, it's, feels like it's too much. Um, and certainly we know that our mood is affected when we're stressed, right? Um, we can feel really anxious. Um, we can have, like Liz mentioned, a lack of motivation or a lack of focus. We just can't focus on anything. We might feel overwhelmed. You know, a person that's experiencing high stress um, can be irritable or um, angry. And we know that sadness and depression um, can be a result of really kind of longer periods of stress, um, you know, that doesn't get looked after. So it's really important, um, especially now, you know, when we do have just that added piece of stress, you know, um, we have our work life, we have our families, we are trying to manage our children. Um, you know, we are isolated. It's just um, those things are causing us so much more stress. Never mind, it's the regular stressors in life, right? So we need to take care of ourselves. Um, we need to learn uh, those tools um, and those uh, things in our toolbox that are going to help us um, cope with stress. Uh, learning to cope with stress in a healthy way is going to make you and the people that you care about become more resilient, right? Um, so there's lots of ways to take care of yourself and reduce stress in your life. And um, it's very individual. So some of these um, that we have up on the board here um, may not apply to everybody. Um, but these are the kind of things that we're hearing um, that people are using these kind of tools to really kind of try and take care of themselves better. Um, so, you know, the first one around social media, we are hearing, um, we hear about the pandemic every day, right? Repeatedly over and over again, um, on social media, in the news, on the radio, it's really hard to, you know, live a day without hearing about it. So, um, the importance of taking breaks, um, from watching or reading or listening to these news stories, because they can be really upsetting right? They can, they can induce a lot of stress and anxiety. So um, when you choose um, to take a break, you know, um, really take a break, you know, try not to, to, to read so much or listen to so much. And when you do, um, you know, choose that source of information wisely. Taking care of your body, right? So important. Um, taking those deep breaths, stretching, getting up during the day. I know myself, 
um, when I'm, I'm sitting on this kind of harder chair and, uh, you know, I, I can feel certainly some, you know, um, stress on my back. So it's really important to, to get up, stretch out, med- you know, do, maybe even meditate for five minutes if that's something that you enjoy doing. Um, trying to eat healthy and well-balanced meals, you know, um, because as uh, someone mentioned, you know, the, our routines are kind of out of whack. So um, eating those meals at the right times um, can be something that helps us. Um, exercising, you know, getting outside, like Liz mentioned, we've been spending so much time outdoors in the last year. And the common theme is how rejuvenating that is for people. Even just short bursts of time outside can really, really help you feel well. Um, connecting with others. You know, um, talk to people that you trust about your concerns and about how you're feeling. Uh, especially children, you know, sharing your concerns and uh, and with them and, and allowing them to share their concerns with you and supporting them. So important. Um, we know that there's a lot of kids that are struggling with online school, you know, and we're trying to work from home. So um, it's been a stressful time. Important to share your emotions around this, get real, right? Um, Share those frustrations, allow them to share them with you Um, and connecting with others, uh, you know, and maybe not talking about the pandemic (laughs) that could be helpful. Um, Maintaining that routine, uh, you know, important. I know myself with my kids um, in the beginning of the kind of school shutdowns, I was not really, you know, paying attention to bedtimes and, and uh, paying attention so much to meal times. But when I started to realize those things were important, even though we were all at home, I think it really helped everybody kind of, you know, get on track again. Focusing your energies on what you can control. You know, what can we control? We can't really control when our life is going to go back to normal. Um, find out what works for you. You know, like I mentioned, these um, these uh, tips are not for everybody. You know, um, we all cope and deal with stress in different ways. But if we just find out, you know, um, what's helpful to us and use those things, um, we can certainly avoid, um, you know, our stress creating further problems in our lives. All right. Thank you, Lynn. So, you know, just uh, as we start to wrap up a little, um, we just, we really want to encourage you to think about the language that you use when talking about mental health. And so, you know, maybe, you know, in your workplaces and your businesses, you know, is there something you can do differently? Um, And, Again, there's lots of resources we're going to share at the end of today um, about where you can find more information. So maybe you're like, I don't really know what to say. But we want to encourage you, even if you don't feel like you know what to say, you still have the capacity. Everyone has the capacity to talk about mental health. You don't need to be an expert. Um, You don't need to have all the answers, right? Just being available um, and being able to listen can sometimes be the biggest support that you can ever offer. Uh, You know, We often have people that reach out and say, oh, I have a family member that needs help and I just don't know what to do. Well, giving your time of just being quiet and letting the person talk is often what we hear is the best. That's what people want. They just want someone they can talk to. So as an employer, you know, do you have those opportunities where you can take the time and listen when somebody wants to reach out to you and talk about what's happening in their lives? How is it affecting their work? So that's the first thing. You know, just just trying to understand, trying not to be judgmental, trying to be, you know, open and looking at the whole situation, that could be really helpful. Um, We want you to, you know, think about what is your approach? And I know it's hard. Times are busy. Um, You know, the stress, the the changes in the restrictions and and so forth with the pandemic, you might be thinking, oh my gosh, this is the last thing. I, I just can't even focus on this. But we know, as we said earlier, it's really important and it needs to be a focus. It helps you in your, your um, productivity. It helps with, you know, keeping employees, um, you know, healthy and wanting to stay working. So take it seriously. Um, if somebody, you know, reaches out and does have something that is fairly serious, listen. And, and you might not have the answers, but maybe you can direct them to someone that they could talk to. Talking to a family doctor, reaching out to us at CMHA. We have a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week crisis line. We have um, 
you can phone and just find out about our resources. It used to be walk-in, but now, of course, by phone. Um, our website is full of, you know, that's one of the good things about COVID. There's been this, you know, huge influx of resources online, virtual groups, um, free resources. So, you know, if you don't know and you want to know more, there's, there's that opportunity. Check out our website. And I know Sarah is going to be sending the links to um, the resources as well. So don't uh, worry too much. Um, so again, language is important. We know that mental health has been, you know, the stigma around mental health and addiction has been around forever. We know it's changing. We see it with our kids when we when we go into schools, like Lynn said, and we ask kids about, you know, what what do you think about when you when you hear the word mental illness or mental health? We don't hear the words that we would have heard, you know, maybe 20 years ago. We don't hear crazy or psycho. We hear depression, anxiety, um, bullying. So it is changing, which is really hopeful. So think about, you know, the language you're using. Think about perhaps maybe some of the judgments that you might be carrying. And we all have judgments, right? To judge is to be human. So really look at yourself and see, you know, are you helping maybe situations or is there something that you could be looking at yourself and changing? And again, when you see something, say something. You know, if, you, if you're worried about somebody, maybe you've noticed a switch in their personality, um, their work, you know, it's okay to say, hey, how are you doing? Is there something I can help you with? So being available to listen is one of, one of the biggest, you know, opportunities that we can ever have to help somebody. And then some, uh, some really uh, cool resources that are available now. Um, so again, Sarah's gonna send the links, but Mental Health uh, Works is a program from CMHA National. And it is pretty neat. Uh, and there's lots of resources on um, the page that she's gonna send you, but it can be, there can be resources to help the employee and the employer. And there are opportunities where you can pay to have um, somebody provide that training as well. Um, we do training here from CMHA Simcoe County that we can just tailor. So if you're looking for something more specific around workplace education and, and some extra training, that's a great site, Mental Health Works. If you would like, you know, maybe you'd like just more general information like what we talked about today, you can reach out to us at CMHA and Lynn and I are very helpful, very happy to talk about what you're looking for and we can tailor something. Bounce Back, I don't know if folks have heard about this program, but uh, it's been around for a while, but it certainly has gained a lot of popularity during the pandemic because it is something that could be offered virtually. It's, you know, for, I think it's 15 years of age and over, um, and it's, it's working around depression, um, some anxiety. So it's actual um, working on how your coping strategies are. It's over the phone, so it's not an in-person, it's free. Um, so there's some workbook, you know, components to it about, you know, looking at yourself and what can you, you know, try to change or, you know, adapt, but it's, it's, uh, it's, I think now offered Canada wide. Am I right, Lynn? Like it's, it's gained some more funding and, um, a lot yes. of popularity. Yeah. yeah. And then of course, there's lots of, uh, resources on, um, our website, on our national site, um, CAMH, so the Center for Addiction and Mental Health in Toronto, has an amazing um, website where you can look up, you know, what is anxiety, what is depression, what is um, um, OCD, so you can find out. So maybe you have somebody in your workplace or in your life and you're like, oh, gee, I wish I could find out more about what this is. There's lots of resources. And then again, if you go to our website, um, cmhastarttalking.ca, there's a whole list of resources during the, the, the pandemic. And the, some of them are fairly precise, like helping a senior, helping kids, helping somebody with anxiety. But there is a really great document about returning to the workplace. And it's, um, it's really neat. So take a moment to look at that. And then um, CMHA Ontario came out with a massive list for resources for crisis. And it looks at every, every possible thing that could be affecting you. So again, a bonus of COVID is we had to really step up our virtual uh, resources. So that's happened. So again, reach out. Um, Sarah's gonna share Lynn's information and myself. If you have questions, if you have something that's happening and you're not sure what else to do, let us know and we will try to connect you or provide you some support. All right. So that takes us to the end and uh, I feel like we probably went over a little bit and I apologize. It's hard. It's hard to kind of keep it short. <laughs> um, but is there any question? Does anybody have something that they wanted to ask or clarification about something? 
Well, I would just like to say, you know, please, no apology necessary. That was fantastic and, you know, really great information. And it is it's such a, a meaningful, and important subject that it, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's natural that, it, that we would want to, you know, continue to, to, to talk about it. So um, actually, just while we're waiting to see if there are any questions, I, I had a question that you kind of um, uh, answered in the last few minutes, really, and it's just around the language. And I'm, I'm wondering, again, if you would see that the language is becoming a little bit more specific. Uh, and, and I think you alluded to it that it is, because it's something that's sort of been on my mind is, is we refer to mental health. But if, if I have a physical health issue, I don't say, oh, you know, my, my physical health is suffering right now. You know, I say I have a headache or my back hurts or I have a sore throat or whatever. We're specific when it comes to, men, to, to physical health and ailments. But, but if I find that we're not too specific, or at least in my experience, when it comes to mental health, you know, we don't say I feel depressed or I feel anxious so much. Would you say that's true? And is that changing? Are we, are we sort of moving in the right direction where we're being more open about specifically what we're feeling? Mm -hmm. Yeah, great, uh, great question, Dave. We actually just had our mental health week um, a couple of weeks ago, and the theme was getting real about how you feel. So you're right, you know, if somebody says, Hey, Dave, how are you doing today? You know, you probably would say, oh, I'm okay, I'm fine. Right? Mm -hmm. You know, do we say, you know what, Liz, I'm really struggling, I'm feeling really overwhelmed. You know, is it harder to say that? Sure. It is, right? Because you, you, you don't know how the person's going to perceive it. So it's, it's twofold, you know, we want to we want people hopefully to be more comfortable in hearing that. So if I hear, you know, Dave say, you know what, I'm really overwhelmed. My, my business is struggling to take that information and be okay with it and not be like, Oh, I don't want to talk to Dave. I don't want to ask him any more questions. He's going to tell me something that I, I don't know what I'm going to, I'm going to say, you know, right. so we have to be able to receive that information and being, being again, opening up how we are to respond to it. like being okay with it. Cause right, if somebody says I have a headache, you're like, Oh, wow, that's too bad, Dave. It sucks mm -hmm. having a headache. And you can say the same. You know what? That sucks that you're overwhelmed. I hear you. So it's a, it's a similar response. But you're right. So things are starting to change. We want people to say how they're feeling. We want people to, to have that same, I have a headache. I feel really overwhelmed. So it, 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 we want that similarity. Yeah. Yeah. It no, normalizes the conversation a lot more. So that's, that's right. Great, great to hear. Um, we do have a question here. Um, uh, it uh, starts with a thank you. And, uh, and then there is, uh, do you offer one-on-one -on -one counseling? Yes, we do offer one-on-one -on -one counseling. Um, we have um, two different programs related to that. Well, actually three. Um, one is um, if you're looking for, actually, if you're looking for therapy, one-on-one -on -one therapy, um, we have a program called the Family Health Team. And um, it's connected to the family doctors in, in Simcoe County that belong to the family health team. Um, and you can ask for a referral um, from, your fam from your family doctor to this counseling program um, and receive some support that way. Um, if you're looking for counseling, um, you know, kind of right away where you have and a specific issue that you need help with right away. We have an on-duty service, um, Monday to Friday, nine to four, which is now available by phone. It usually is a walk-in service and you can actually speak to a counselor that day. So that counselor will phone you um, and follow up with you um, and have that you know discussion and, and, and then look at ways that you can be further supported. So whether that's referring that person to our case management service um, or whether that's referring somebody you know to a different um, organization that could better serve them, that counselor will, will do that work with them. And we also offer addiction counseling one-on-one -on -one as well. So um, we do have several different um, avenues for one-on-one -on -one counseling. And then we certainly have a whole youth program as well um, that does, you know, lots of different uh, support options for youth. Uh, so again, check out our website because everything is there and it's, um, or just call us, right? Just call our, our main number and somebody will be able to talk you through what we have. Wonderful. Thank you both. Um, actually, a question here for Chantal. Um, the question is, will the library be open to the public post lockdown? We still do not know. Um, it's whatever the government allows us to do. If we'll have um, browsing or not right now, we're still available for curbside. 
So um, yeah, we're just taking our guidance from them. And I think everyone's waiting to see what they're going to replace all the color uh, areas with because <laughs> now it's, I think, going to be, we don't know. <laughs> um, so that will be interesting, but, but we're definitely looking forward to welcoming customers back into the building. Um, yeah. Yeah, sooner rather than later, let's hope. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's the answer right now. I just don't know, right? I mean, I think in the beginning we would try to find answers for everything. And sometimes you just have to say, I really just don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's okay. That's, and that's, that's okay. It's that's okay. an okay answer. Yeah. Um, just while we wait and see if there are any more uh, questions, folks, I, I just would like to make a couple of announcements. So our next event takes place on May 27th. Uh, from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m., 12 noon. It is a, uh, it's a workshop, an interactive workshop uh, entitled Effective Tips for Managing Cash and Expenses. Uh, so uh, it'd be, again, it's an interactive workshop. So we will be sending out resources beforehand in this case and be presented by Michelle Craig of Booksmarts. And then our next learning lab takes place on June 16th uh, and it's entitled Benefit from Benefits. And we'll be discussing how to protect yourself from the financial risk of serious injury and illness through both government and private sources. So uh, registration links for both of those events will also be shared with you uh, later on today when we share the, uh, the resources from today's presentation. Um, and let me just take a quick look and see. Uh, doesn't look as though there are any more questions. Um, I'll hold it open for another, another minute or so if people do have questions. Um, and Liz, Lynn, uh, maybe do you have any final thoughts you wish to share with the group? I have a question. Um, sure. Have you seen many um, organizations like this, smaller businesses even, or medium-sized businesses offering sort of like, um, like mental health or like staff social, like, you know, some type of support, uh, like we have our joint health and safety, and then we have a BPL um, CARES group. So we have this CARES statement and they sort of try and run events um, for staff. And now their focus is going to be very much on, on mental health and well-being, be that, you know, just things to do um, as staff to, to, you know, bring us together, especially because ev I think everyone has been working in these like group clusters at their workplaces, right, to reduce interactions. So even just being able to interact with each other when we can again or in a virtual environment. So have you seen that at all? Well, I mean, even at Canadian Mental Health, we, you know, because we're the same, we work, we're working in these smaller, you know, cohorts in the office and, and, uh, and then again at home. So there is some isolation. And we've had lots of conversations about what could we do? You know, can we do get togethers with really like five people at a time or try to do a barbecue outside? And it's so tough. Like, it's really tough. So we're on the same page as you. We'd like to try to find some uh, some ways of, again, just interacting and having that, you know, team building again. But it's it's really tough. I haven't heard very much. I mean, we often just hear the other side of people are really struggling. So um, but I would love to. I don't know, Lynn, have you have, any, have you heard anything? I, I, the only thing I thought about was, you know, we did have our, our mental health uh, week at the beginning of May, and we did see a lot on um, social media um, with different, um, you know, different businesses or organizations um, really getting on board, not necessarily getting together, but, you know, doing a photo, um, you know, and doing photos and then attaching it to one big photo, sharing their thoughts about about mental health and getting real about their emotions. So we saw some virtual stuff going on, um, but not as, of course, not a lot of in-person stuff, which I think people are really, really missing. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, we had, we had a conversation with the Collingwood Library and they were doing, um, was it called Chalk and Talk? So they were writing on the streets. So they would write messages uh, and then encourage people in the community when they're out walking to write other messages and take pictures. So that was, that was kind of cool, but we, we, I think we all want that for sure. So if you have ideas, you know, put it out there. 
Fantastic. Well, thank you both again very, very much for your time today. Sincerely appreciated. Um, I'm really looking forward to getting this recording as a resource up on our YouTube page and, and being able to continually share it with the community. Um, so thank you very much for that. And um, yeah, I just uh, want to thank everybody for attending today. Uh, I hope uh, it was valuable and, and, and people um, got the, the information they were looking for from it. I, I, know, I know that I did and I appreciate the conversation. Um, and with that, it just remains to say thank you again for your time and, uh, and hopefully everybody can get out and enjoy this beautiful weather today. Perfect. Thank you so much for inviting us. It was wonderful. Enjoy thank, you. The thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Right. Keep well. Bye-bye. You too. Bye-bye now.